Naturalists observed during England's Industrial Revolution that the light-coloured lichen covering the trees had become darkened by pollution. The rare dark moths that once had trouble hiding were now well camouflaged. But the lighter-coloured moths now stood out against the background and so became increasingly visible to predators. The changing numbers of the two types of moths was carefully documented. Years later, when the pollution diminished and the trees lightened, other naturalists could measure how the lighter coloured moths predominated once again. Natural selection, before our very eyes. Down Under is our final direction. Over 200 years ago, this was dry woodland, fringed by temperate forests. This is what parts of Australia looked like before the European settlers arrived, with their axes and saws, their families and their domestic animals. A temperate rainforest in the southern seas. But this is not a museum. It's a conservation area with a revolutionary strategy. One man's mission to recreate a bit of Australia's past. Dr. John Wormsley has spent the last 30 years buying up parcels of land blighted by farming and then creating sanctuaries where the indigenous fauna and flora can once again find a foothold. In 1969, Dr. Wormsley bought an old dairy farm just north of Adelaide. 100 years of intensive farming had scarred the land and most of the indigenous animals had disappeared. Up went Australia's first really effective feral proof barrier. A fence which actually kept out those foreigners that the Europeans had brought with them and which have proved so destructive. Foxes, cats, rabbits. With the vegetation safe from the rabbits and the predators kept out, the small marsupials that had always lived here were able to re-establish themselves. And the list of locals has a wonderful Aussie ring to it. Wileys and wallabies, bilbies and bandicoots. Many of the smaller marsupials had been all but wiped out. And so an extensive breeding program was started here at what is no longer a dairy farm, but the Warrawong Earth Sanctuary. These rangers have come to see how a female quoll is getting along. Various diseases make it difficult to breed them in captivity. They were once common in eastern Australia, but are now nearly extinct because of the cat and fox. Get the female. This female looks healthy, though. Here at Warrawong, they've managed to breed over a hundred since 1986, and they check whether she's carrying any young in her brood pouch. And as you can see, that's still, still very tight, that pouch, which is a very good indication. But, uh, in, it. in fact, since 1969, 15 other rare and endangered species have also been rescued from the brink and successfully reintroduced to the sanctuary along with 100,000 native trees and shrubs. The sanctuary is here to save, but also to instruct. And some of the information the kids learn is truly shocking. One third of mammal species lost in the world since Christopher Columbus set sail across the Atlantic are Australian. Education saves wildlife, but so too does money. Earth Sanctuaries Limited is a listed public company. You can buy shares in it and even receive dividends generated by a number of activities, from the sale of timber for building material to weddings.
If you fancy a wedding with a duck-billed platypus as your witness, or a cup of tea with the betong by your boots, you can only get them here at Warrawong. From the original 14 hectare dairy farm, there are now 10,000 hectares of feral free sanctuary in Australia. And all based on the simple premise, aliens out, locals in.